I don't want to make it longer. Wonderful to see you here. And I want to have a word of prayer as we start our uh, sermon. Father, you are so good. We as a society thank you in the United States once a year. But Thanksgiving should be all year round. I thank you, Lord, for the breath that you've given me today. Thank you, Lord, because I'm able to move. Thank you, Lord, because we're able to open our eyes. Oh, Father, there are so many reasons that we are thankful for. Father, please, today, as we hear your word, I ask that you may speak to us, that we will be able to listen to you and change our hearts, Lord, back to you. This is my sincere prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A couple of months ago in the country of Italy, there was a campaign talking about example, about our mission and how many people see our example. And so before we start, I want to play this one minute video that I think says a lot, that trans, uh, transmits a very strong message. So Drago, can you please play this video? It looks like rain again today. Dark clouds gather and fill the sky. Don't know how to talk to you, just know how to say goodbye. Have you actually got to climb a slide, Go back where you came from. Learn this baby. Go back where you came from. Influence. It is a humbling thought to know that there are many people whose only God they will ever know is the God that we present to them. It is a sobering thought to know that our mission field might not be the Navajos, or it might not be Panama, it might not be India, but it may be closer than we think. Influence. Our children, our co-workers. In fact, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, it says that you are a written epistle, a written letter in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are the epistle of Christ. Do you know that the biggest sermon that you can preach is not the one that I'm preaching right now in front of you? But the Bible says that people can read you by what you do. People can read you by what you do. More than by what you say, they will read you by what you do. Our kids read us all the time. They read what we do, the words we say, our actions, our faces. The book of Romans, chapter 2. Verse 24 says, For the name of God is blasphemed, it says, among the Gentiles because of you. 
What a thought. It says that while we are open letters and people can read our good things, the things that we do that are good, some people blaspheme God because of our actions, because of what we do, not necessarily what we say, but our lives. Boom! Thunder! You remember two weeks ago we found ourselves at the foot of the mountain with the great prophet Elijah who wanted to see a sign of God in miraculous acts. But he didn't get the thunder that he wanted. He got a silent voice. But this time we sit and we stand at the edge of the mountain again. But this time, we're not going to find silence. In fact, we're going to find thunder and lightning. We're going to see and we look up to the mountain and it's like a volcano and it is erupting. Fire. And a voice speaks like a trumpet. And every time you hear this voice, it starts to quake. And it says, Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images. Thou shalt not pronounce or misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not Steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, and thou shalt not covet. The ten words of God, and every time he says these words like a trumpet, everything begins to quake. You know, when I was small, I was able to comprehend all of the Ten Commandments. All of them. The fourth one talks about the Sabbath. The second one, not make graving images. But the one that I always had a hard time understanding was the third one. You're going to say the third one. Yes, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold guiltless he who takes his name in vain. You know, I have heard this preached many times and in Bible studies, and I have even, even made this, this expl- uh, given this explanation. That whenever you trip on the carpet, whenever you're walking by and you hit your elbow on something, you say, oh my God. And they always tell me, well, if you do that, you're breaking the third commandment. And I'm thinking, oh boy, man, I've broken that so many times. You know, in Spanish, we have a saying called Dios mío. And we kind of say it whenever we really want to emphasize something. We say, Dios mío. And in other languages, you also have this calling God's name. And I always felt really bad, and I'm like, boy, you know, okay, if that's breaking the third commandment, then, you know, I've, I've done it a lot of times, but really, I mean, is, is, is it all, is that it? You know, just saying, oh my God, or, oh my, is that it? Well, the, in the time of the Bible, the name, had a very important meaning. The name meant the person's character. It meant the person's identity, the person's substance. Last week at Youth Vespers, we studied about a man by the name of Jabez. How many of you have heard of Jabez? Jabez. How many of you have read his prayer? Oh boy, if you want to read a powerful prayer, you got to go look up Jabez. But his name meant the one who causes pain. How many of you have heard of Jacob? (laughs) That's better. This guy was the usurper. He tricked his father into think making make he tricked his father into believing that he was his brother so that he could get the blessing. 
And so we, I invite you to come with me now and come with me to the desert of Midian as Moses is shepherding his flock. And all of a sudden, he's hit, he gets the sight of a bush that is burning but is not consumed. And then he hears a voice calling to him saying, Moses, Moses, take off your sandals because the land or the place where you're standing is holy. And then he says, I have heard my people cry in Egypt. I have heard them suffer in Egypt. And I want you to go and deliver them. How can I go and deliver them, says Moses? Well, I am going to send you. But when I go and I tell them who has sent me, what are they going to say? With what authority do I go? And Drago, can you please? And God uses the name that we sometimes call in the English Jehovah, in other places we call Yahweh or Yahweh. God uses this title and he says, I am who I am is sending you. Tell them that the Lord is sending you. And this is the name that it is used. I want to tell you something. This name is so sacred to some Jews that they... Instead of saying this name, by the way, this is like a consonant name, all right? These are like consonants, and we would say Yod, He, Vav, and He. And some people, they're say, they say that this is God's specific holy name, that instead of saying Yahweh, they say, they pronounce the name Adonai. Because it is so holy that they even change it. When they read this, instead of saying Yahweh, they, they change it to Adonai, which means Lord. There are some Jews that whenever they hit their elbow on something and they happen to say, Oh my God, then they even say, Blessed be His name, so as to not um, uh, break the commandment, Holy. And so in the third commandment, when it says, Do not pronounce the name of the Lord, your God in vain. It's saying, don't use this name in vain. You know, there are some people that even today in the Jewish culture, they do not mention this name. For some, it is so sacred that it is not pronounced. In fact, like I told you, the, these are vowels in the Hebrew. And they say that whenever you say it, it is almost like if you're breathing. And so I want to have a little exercise with, with you. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. They say that saying this name it's almost like breathing. Yod, He, Vav, He. It is unpronounceable. Yod, He, Vav, He. You know, the Bible says that whenever he, God created Adam, that he breathed into him the breath of life. Could it be that, and I, believe, and I believe this, that in all of us, whether we want it or not, whether we accept it or not, all of us are sustained by the breath of God. You know, there is a Hebrew tradition that says that every breath a human takes testifies of our Creator. Let me tell you something. When a baby first is born, and when they open up that womb, and he comes out, what's the first thing he does? He... Ah! 
Whenever he does that, he is we hear a crying, but the Hebrew will tell you that he is testifying. Yod, hey, ba, hey. It is like the sound of breathing. When a person dies and they breathe their last breath, whenever you can no longer pronounce the name of God in breath, you stop living. Nowadays, men deny the existence of God. God is dead. God doesn't exist. I am. My brain is the measure of God. Little do they know that it is the God they are denying in their words who is giving them the breath of life to say the foolishness that they are saying. Yod, hey, va, hey. In every breath of life, in everything we say, human beings announce that we depend upon him. If this is true, then could it be that taking God's name in vain, now I told you that the name means the character, Name means the reputation of the person. Could this be that we have God's reputation inerrant in us? By the fact that we live, we already have God's name because we have God's breath of life. Whether we want it or not, whether you say yes or no, you already have it. But could it be that whenever we become Christians, whenever we accept the gospel, whenever we believe the Lord, we get baptized, could it be then that we also accept his reputation? So the third commandment is not just saying, oh my God, when I fall, or, or, or pronouncing God's name, merely saying it, but it has to do with the name that we take, the character, that we take the characteristic in our character. Let me ask you a question. If this is true, the Bible says that whenever we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in us. It says that we are the temple of God, meaning that we have His name, we have His reputation. Christians, Christ, the reputation of Christ. That's why it says that we're open letters. People know where we're Christians. They are going to read what we do. They are going to, they, the only God that they are ever going to get is the God that you and I show them. Because we bear the reputation of God Himself. All of us bear it in air, all of us bear it just by breathing. But those of us that have accepted Christ into our life have it in us. We know that we have it. So let me ask you a question Are you like God in character? That's a big question to ask. Those are some big shoes to fill. Let me, tell you, let me tell you my favorite Bible verse. It says, The Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and kindness. Are you a compassionate husband? Are you a compassionate wife? Are you gracious? Gracious means that you are treated much, much, that you treat people much, much better than they deserve. Can your kids say, my daddy is gracious to me? If I were to ask your co-workers, would they say, this guy is compassionate and gracious? Slow to anger. Did you get mad today before you came? It happens, you know. Sometimes the worst fights are before you come to church. Slow to anger. And abounding, full of love and kindness. Is that the kind of reputation? Is that the kind of character that you are showing the world? He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of Christians? What does the Lord require of His people that are called by His name, that carry His reputation? 
to do justly. Are you fair? Do you act fair in your job? Do you cheat in school? To love mercy. Do you forgive the unforgivable? Or do you remind them, oh, but you did that to me 10 years ago. And then it says to walk humbly before your God. Do we walk humbly? When we open the Bible, are we willing to be teachable? Or will we say, oh no, I know everything. I have a PhD. I go to a prestigious university. I have a prestigious job. I don't need to know what God wants for my life. What are we portraying to the world? Let this mind being you, which was in Christ, who being in the likeness of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but to make but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. Do you serve others? Can people in your job say, man, the one thing I remember about him is that he served. A man of service. Children, youth, can your parents say, my children are obedient, and every time I ask them for a favor, they always... Obey me. You thought I was just talking to parents, huh? You thought I was just talking to adults. No, 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 no. If you have accepted Christ, then it doesn't mean that you need to be baptized for this. Baptism is just an outer showing. It's, it's just a... a um, it's, you are showing in public what you, it's already happened in your heart. You already have the character of God. You say you're a Christian, Marlon and Angelo, meaning you already have. You bear His character. You bear His name. Influence. How do people view us? Are we living up to our name? Thou shalt not... Take the name of the Lord God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. It's not just, and, and it's also not mispronouncing God's name when I get, you know, I believe that too, but it goes deeper than that. It is, are you living up to what you say you are? But I am not here to be the bearer of bad news, guys. I'm not here to, I, I couldn't let you leave on this note because I know that I have broken this and I'm still working on this commandment. And it is not even me, but it is Christ who is helping me and is helping you. But I do have to say, there are some of you right now who know that if you don't make a U-turn, you're on the way to perdition. And so I invite you today that if you have called yourself a Christian, but are not living to the standard or to the reputation that God would like you, or are not even trying to, that you're going to go, you're, gonna, you're on your way to perdition. We are on the way to perdition. Because we bear the name of God. The book of Romans 10, 13, and to finish, I read this. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Chronicles, chapter, 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called, if my people who are called, by who? By my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. You cannot call upon the name of the Lord without first recognizing your need for Him. You cannot want to be like Him before recognizing first who you are. 
And maybe there's someone here today and you know your own heart. You know that you're far away from God. You know that your parents have taught you well. You know that you have read it in the Bible. And yet you do not want to believe you are misusing God's name. Well, today I invite you. And I want you to think about this. We're never going to keep God's name or live up to the standard that he gives us on our own. Could it be that the way that we keep this commandment is exactly by what the Bible says? Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Could it be that keeping God's name is getting on our knees and asking for forgiveness? Let me ask you a question, parents. Do your kids see that you pray, that you get on your knees? Because if they don't see that you get on your knees as parents, they are not going to get on, on their knees either. Do your kids see you opening the Bible and having devotion? Let me ask you, let me say something else. Do you have devotion with your kids at home? Because your kids are reading you. Could it be that keeping the name of God is saying, God, here I am. I struggle with this. But I'm going to get on my knees with my family. I'm going to get on my knees and open the Bible. And I'm going to trust that you can do for me what I cannot do for myself. And those of us that don't have kids, leaders in the church, What are church members seeing from us? What are people in our jobs thinking of us, seeing of us? Do not be mistaken. We bear God's name in two ways. By the act of living and breathing. Yod, hey, va, hey. Whether you want it or not. Even the person that says God doesn't exist testifies that he does exist. And number two, whenever we accept the gospel, we bury, we know that we carry God's name. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. The book of Ephesians, verse three, chap, uh, chapter 3, verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. What power works in us? The Holy Spirit. That's the power that works in us. Only when we humble ourselves and ask God to help us will the Holy Spirit enable us to live like God, to be like God. And what I know, and this I know, that the people who are like God are the ones that sometimes don't even notice that they're like God. And I have been blessed by many people here in this church. And maybe you didn't even know it, but your smile, your support, your prayers... have encouraged me a lot. To Him be the glory in the church, in Christ, in all generations, forever and ever. Amen. My message to you is this. Don't give up. Trust the Lord. Come back to Him. Being confident of this, that He who began the good work in us, will He Himself bring it to completion. Completion. In Jesus Christ and until the day of the Lord don't give up and it is in not giving up and trying and struggling in prayer Bible study that we give the best example of what God's name truly should be amen
I invite the congregation to stand, and we're going to sing our closing song. Father, an angel once fell because he wanted to be like you in power. But he did not want it to be like you in character. Oh, Father, may this not happen to any of us. May we seek you with a humble heart. May we want to learn of you May Jesus be the poster in our rooms. And in doing so, Lord, help us to influence our kids, our co-workers. Help us to preach the most amazing and important sermon of them all, which is our lives. Father, there are some here that I know need a U-turn in their life. Father, I want you to touch their heart right now that they can open their heart to you, that they can listen to your voice, that they can be reminded that they bear your name, whether they want it or not, just by the fact of living, but that you want them to also accept you and to preach the most beautiful sermon ever preached, which is a Christ-filled life. Forgive us for our sins, for our trespasses. And thank you, Lord, because today we testify of your character. Help us to testify of your love until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen.